Welcome to the Forestville United Methodist Church and our online community. Merry ninth day of Christmas and Happy New Year. My name is Vicki Holden and I will be leading worship today along with Michael Stanford and Pastor Lunisi Togo. This is our Epiphany Sunday and the day we celebrate our gifts for 2022 and the years to come. As we continue celebrating the birth of Jesus, Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, King of Kings, what a gift indeed. We are so grateful to welcome you back today, whether you're here or at home, and to give thanks for all the blessings we have received this year. As we continue to serve our community in difficult times, we rejoice at the opportunity to bring uplifting worship, lead by the light of Christ. During this soft time of opening, we would like to thank everyone for the following protocols that keep us safe and making adjustments on how we communicate with one another. Any announcements or prayer requests can be called in or emailed to the church office. The announcements for this week, January 2nd, 2022. The office is closed tomorrow for the New Year's holiday. UMW will meet at 12 p.m. tomorrow. Bring your brown bag lunch. No. 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 Okay. We are canceling that. No UMW tomorrow. The worship team will meet this Tuesday, January 4th at 10 a.m. here in the hall. Prayer time is Wednesday, 4 p.m. via Zoom. Bell's practice is Wednesday at 4.15 p.m. followed by choir at 5 p.m. Next Sunday, we will celebrate the installation of new church leaders for 2022. Now as we listen to the prelude and the light is brought in, allow yourselves to focus on the light of the candles. Let go of any distractions, giving yourself this time and space for renewal centering in the light of Jesus. Let's prepare our hearts for worship.
that was beautiful. Please join me in the opening prayer. God of our hopes, Christ of our faith, Spirit in our hearts, we come to worship you with joy and gladness. Your goodness knows no limits of generation or gender or condition of citizenship. You are kind to all and we worship you in all sincerity through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And stand, if you will, for the call to worship. Arise, shine, for your light has come. Like sages from afar, come and behold your Christ. Let us us upon our knees in his honor. Let us lift our voices in praise of his name. As we prepare to sing our opening hymn, I invite you to pass a wave to the people around you and to the people worshiping at home. And we will be singing angels from realms of glory. And we don't have them, we have it on the screen. Covers the earth and gloom the nations. 
the Lord will shine upon you. God's glory will appear over you. Nations will come to your light and kings to your dawning radiance. Lift up your eyes and look all around. They are all gathered. They have come to you. Your sons will come from far away and your daughters on caregivers' hips. Then you will see and be radiant. Your heart will tremble and open wide because the sea's abundance will be turned over to you. The nations' wealth will come to you. Countless camels will cover your land. Young camels from Midian and Epaph, they will all come from Sheba, carrying gold and incense, proclaiming the Lord's praises.
second scripture this morning is from Matthew 2, 1 to 12. Coming of the Magi. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem, in the territory of Judea, during the rule of King Herod, Magi came from the east to Jerusalem. They asked, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We've seen his star in the east, and we've come to honor him. When King Herod heard this, he was troubled, and everyone in Jerusalem was troubled with him. He gathered all the chief priests and the legal experts and asked them where the Christ was to be born. They said, in Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what the prophet wrote. You, Bethlehem, land of Judah, by no means are you least among the rulers of Judah, because from you will come one who governs, who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and found out from them the time when the star had first appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search carefully for the child. When he found him, report to me so that I too may go and honor him. When they heard the king, they went. And look, the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stood over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child would marry his mother. Falling to their knees, they honored him. Then they opened their treasure chests and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Because they were warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they went back to their own country by another route. Now will you please join us for the hymn, We Three Kings, on the screen.
Magi in action. Happy New Year to you all. Arise and shine. Your light has come. Lift up your eyes and look around. The delight of God's love shines radiantly. Our hearts thrill and rejoice. Let us pray. Shine your light upon us, Lord. The light to lead, the light to find, the light to listen and understand the newness of our beings and the true reason for our being chosen to be in this place at the beginning of this new year. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your honor, our Lord everlasting. Amen. First, I would thank the choir. Oh my God, that song really inspires us today and I hope forever. Thank you, John. Magi in action. Isn't it a great feeling? Isn't it a great feeling to know that today is the first Sunday of 2022? Some people may ask, hmm, what's so great about it? <laughs> it's because we may continue to do what we normally do. But on the other side of the coin, we are getting older and wiser. And we realize that the world continues to change with or without our consent. Or shall I say, we can find better ways of coexisting with changes. Amen? Amen. I hope we all agree. Some people try to set new resolutions or new goals for the year as a way to strategize and to be, and be organized. But some people are still searching for new ways to live and work, or a new religion to worship in, or find a new lifestyle that suits them better than their old one. But as long as life is going on, we can still come up with a plan B and C and so forth. However, those who are in Christ and believe that God's love doesn't change continue to rejoice in him and be happy with all blessings received. Another amen. amen. Time flies. Time flies. For the last four weeks we were in a different world with an Advent mindset. And what we took from those special times is that Christ continues to shine his light in our hearts through his words and sacraments. Then we realize that whatever light we have is reflected only from him. So we can joyfully bear witness to the light of the world all year long. Now we have entered the epiphany season. I shared this with a friend last week and she mentioned that epiphany is her best season. She had her ideas about the revelation of who Jesus is and her realization of Jesus' manifestation in so many lives for the betterment of the world. Of course we know that Epiphany is the manifestation of Christ to all people. The beginning of the inclusiveness in this holy child's world began with the Magi. The Gentiles, the Gentiles who went to visit the holy child after his birth. The Magi of Babylon are mentioned in the book of Jeremiah and are defined as physicians, learned men, and it said that from them descended a line of evil, perverted priests and sorcerers. It's not at all likely that the Magi in our readings seeking to worship the newborn king or the Jews could be included in the likes of those weakened people. But in the book of Daniel, you can read it, chapter 2 verse 48, it mentions a power manifested in Daniel who was a God-fearing patriarch by the, by the king of the time, King Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel was promoted to a ruler and had great power over King Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom. 
This gave Daniel an opportunity to make significant changes in the way the wise men or the magi operated in Babylon. The speculation was that there was a large number of Jews and Levite descendants who still lived in Babylon and the surrounding areas who did not return from exile to Jerusalem. Perhaps they were practicing and still following the example of Daniel and those who believed in one God. They may have been magis or governors. It's most probable that the magi who visited young Jesus would come under this second, the second category of God-fearing, high-ranking rulers. These magi from the likes of wealthy kings from their society, nevertheless, they were still considered outsiders when they went to visit baby Jesus. In other writings, it says that the wise men who visited Jesus knew in advance who they were going to visit and that the purpose of their visit was to worship him. It is not likely that heathen or astrologers would go to the great effort to travel many, many miles to honor the son of a deity they did not worship. We can be confident that these magi were not pagans. The star that led them to Bethlehem was definitely a miraculous origin and it had the ability to move on its own. Matthew wrote that the star went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. Matthew talks about that star like a human being. He moved and then he stopped. The only other moving type of star we heard in the Bible was the one that led the Israelites out of Egypt. There was a light at night and a cloud in daytime which represented the power of God leading the Israelites to safety. The star that led the Magi well, was also a miraculous leader as well. His star was probably an angel or God himself. These miraculous guides have a glorious appearance like radiating stars and they can move. They can move and change direction to show someone the way. Stars and miraculous leaders in the Bible often symbolize angels. Look around here and see the stars are here with us. Those of us who have been, who have seen the movie, The Gospel According to Matthew, the 1964 film by the Italian director Pier Paolo Pasolini, may have cherished moments of it. I was so touched to see the places where the Magi traveled when they were following the star on their way to that special place in Bethlehem. Because I watched that movie, the Magi's faces were glowing when they reached their destination, especially when they reached out and held the baby. Mary's face too was aglow as she cherished the visit. There were others too who witnessed the moment, but the most expensive gifts they brought, the gold, frankincense, and mirror, were presented on bended knee. Those wealthy people knew how to bend on their knees. How did they know that they are worshiping a God? On a bended knee, in appreciation, the miraculous figure appeared to show them a different, safer way back home. Often when we seek to better ourselves in life, our faith comes to a halt because we are choosing between our friendship and loyalties. Those magi 
did not have any joys, any joys between Herod and the miraculous figure who appeared to let them away. We always reach a critical moment when we must decide which is the light in life and which is familiar but has an uncertain future. The Magi's choice to follow the star changed their lives forever. How could the power, how could the power of a small child transform this older wise man? Surely everything is possible through God. The Magi proved what was predicted and it was worth taking the time to search for the truth to prove for themselves for the sake of the humankind. The Magi's journey was recorded in history and their actions shown for the world to see that there is life and hope when people put their trust and faith in God. These Magi, remember these Gentiles also showed, also showed that Christ's kingdom is available to all people without boundaries. Angels, shepherds with animals, Gentiles, the Magi, nature, the wind, they were all rejoicing with the same God, the creator God, the same God that we are praying to, with voices calling us, what? Rise, call us to arise and shine even in this unprecedented, unprecedented time. The joys, the joys is always, is always still for us to make. The Magi showed us how to, how to search for the truth, how to put our faith in Christ in this year when we are journeying Look for the light. Of course we know, we talk about it, we sing about it, but do we really, really, really know the light? On this first Sunday of this year, on this Epiphany Sunday, let us remember to let God and his light, the star shine. Let these be our joys. Let this be our choice without any doubt. We are already included in the group, those allowed to visit the baby. We are already allowed to visit the baby. But do you have time this year? Do you have any time this year to spare so we can all search and visit the power to embrace us? Look for the space within us that has not yet accepted him and let God's word arise and shine through us as it will lead us to a joyful life and a happy church throughout 2022. In Jesus' name, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, the Almighty, who was in the beginning and is at present and will be within us forever. We are thrilled to join all your people nationwide in worshiping you with great anticipation of your promises to be still and know that you are God, exalted on earth and among us. Forgive us for being in darkness during most of the past year, yet your light continues to show us better ways. We are glad to know that the star that led the Magi to the stable also shows the world that its Savior has been born. We are moved to be reminded that we live in a world that has been covered by darkness and that we still need to make the journey to the door of the stable to the entrance which was first reached by the shepherds. And today we know that the Magi were searching and found the same place of your beloved son 
who is our Savior. May we be the next to find that place. May our lives reflect your light day by day as we seek to serve you anywhere you have placed us, that we might be the means through which others can encounter Jesus Christ. As we are gathered here in your sacred space, we remember those who wished to be here with us, but due to work or illness or other reasons were not able to join us. May they be blessed and enlightened by the same grace that we have here in this place. We lift up Ron Stever and all who have been in hospital and are now at home recuperating and those who live alone and cannot drive. We lift up all households of this community and our friends far and near. We lift up our goals and purposes for the year ahead to lead your people with spiritual loving gentleness to you and to let your words be light on all pathways to know right and do good and to do no harm to anyone and do the best we can at all times in any place we can with all things said and unsaid in Jesus name Amen, Amen. Table. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. He is right to give thanks and praise. O God, you are the creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image to love and to be loved. You made a holy covenant with us and sent prophets to teach us your truth. When we turned away and were unfaithful, you kept faith with us. 
And so with your people on earth, and all the company of heaven, we join in your praise, saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of power and mind, heaven and earth are full of your glory.
season, we shared our stories of giving as we pondered what gifts we have to offer. And today we celebrate by bringing our gifts forward for a blessing. I invite you to come forward and add your commitment card, if you haven't done so already, to the basket in which we prepare to bless the gifts of giving to the continued ministries of our church. At this time, I would like to ask the airport chair Council Chair Mike Mortensen and um, Trustees, the Finance Chair, the Treasury Secretary, and you, the Stewardship Committee, please come forward and help me with the uh, blessing. And all of you bring your, your heart together with us. If you are able to move to the front and be with me and join me, please. I know this is something new for, me, uh, for you to see but I would just love to appreciate your hard work that you have done in this time of campaigning for this time, because this is the lifeline of our church. In a moment, we are going to take this morning ties. Let us hear Luke 6, verse 38. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, press down, and shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. With the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. We can see here that Jesus says, give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. So what exactly is Jesus saying to us? Does he force us to give? Or is it just a suggestion? Jesus calls for us to give into his kingdom. And the beauty of his calling is that not only will our gifts return to us, but our blessings 
our blessings will be pressed down and running over. It is as if you have a cup in your hands and God turns on the faucet, but he does not stop at the halfway mark. He keeps pouring until you realize what a blessed life you have. He will return to us in ways we don't even expect. We bring our gifts to your house, Lord, today. Jesus, you said to give and it will be given unto me. We thank you that with the same measure with which it will be measured back to us, we believe that we receive it and we act in faith on your word today. Please put your head forward towards where the blessings, where the cards are. Lord, we come before you in your presence to place our ties to you in faith. We believe your word and we honor it by putting our faith in action through giving. We thank you. We thank you for your blessing and we believe we will receive what you have promised. May we honor the hearts and the hands that give. Bless them. Bless these gifts, the fruit of their labors in your honor. Bless the church ministries and the ways they will use these ties, these sweats from families. In Jesus Christ, the generous giver. Amen. 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 Be seated. Thank you. And now for the offering. <clears throat> Today, your offering makes it possible for continued ministry of the Forestville United Methodist Church as it works to provide food for families, spiritual nourishment, and deepening of faith and the gifts of hope to so many. If you are here in person today, there is a place for you to leave your tithes and offerings in the narthex as you exit after services in lieu of passing the plate today. And for those online, I would like to invite you to go to our website at forestvilleumc.org or feel free to mail your checks to Forestville UMC 6550 Covey Road, Forestville, California 95436. Your faithful support is a blessing. And now we will sing Star Child Verses One for the Doxology. that the gifts of our hands are no substitute for loyalty of our lives. Receive these gifts and enable us to serve your creation as we have worshiped you with ourselves as well as with our gifts. May each gift grow in love and multiply in the community and throughout the world. Amen. Amen. Please join us for the closing song, Jesus, the Light of the World.
Let us go forth rejoicing in the light of God's love. May the love of Christ that shines in you shines brightly in the world wherever you go as he is the divine giver, the radiant light and the fountain of life. Go with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forever. And the people of God always say, Amen.